Welcome to the final day of World 22 play-in stage in Mexico City. Just four teams remain in the hunt for the final two spots in the group stage. First up, it's North America versus Europe in a best of five at Worlds for the first time since Woo! 2018. Don't be so excited, Raz. It's going to be a bad day for you. The mm -hmm. Mad Lions that one. are taking on the evil geniuses before Japan's detonation. Yeah. Focus me attempt to bring down the MSI champions Royal Never Give Up. I'm Quickshot, joined as always by Chronicler and Raz. Now, gentlemen, we do have a lot to cover today and so little time. So we're going to try speed run this analysis as quickly as possible so we can set the stage and the scene for everybody at home. Let's start by Let's recapping yesterday's series. Uh, Raz, Mad Lions versus Saigon Buffalo played out pretty much as expected. Yeah, there were a few aberrations. The Bang Top got the Saigon Buffaloes that win, but then Mad Lions went wild, specifically El Yoya. He was a madman all series long. And it's well in line with what we expected. I really like the creativity of SGB, but in a best of five, that can only get you so far. So seeing Mad close it out uh, through the person that has been getting them as many wins uh, is, I think, in complete line with what we'd expect to see the focus be today as well. I think both teams stepped up and looked uh, maybe better than anticipated from the yes. group stage. I think we saw cleaner levels of play. I enjoyed the draft adaptations we saw, but ultimately, as you mentioned, Alioya on that Belveth, he popped off. He really did. It was actually insane to see how active he was on the map, being able to find kills every lane that he ended up going to. Even had, what was it, uh, minions, I, I remember he had farmed so much that he was getting taxed by his farm because of his jungle <laughs> item. So he was, he was actually way too fed in that game. And I would be shocked if we actually see them get that specific combination of not just the Belvev, but the Vex as well. Oh, Mad Lions happened. have shown how well they're able to play around the mid-game power that it provides, and it is really impressive to play on the map, because uh, Ayoya by himself, strong enough as is. Now, Detonation Focus, me took on Loud. That first game was incredible. 46 minutes long, 40-odd kills. It was no sub chronic line. I'm going to come to you first. Ultimately, that was the only game that Loud would win. How did the series play out from your perspective? I think in the first game, we saw very clearly that Loud, if the chaos truly reigned supreme on the rifts, could stand up to that nation focus me. But then as we got further in the series, I think that FM got not only more comfortable with Loud's play style, but they started being able to play around their strongest players, for me most notably Yuta Pong, yes. much better. His Kaisa was on point. And being able to see the support Shen essentially play towards what was Loud's aggression, trying to find dives both mid and top side, Shen would be able to come out and help that. I thought that also Yaharong had a really great eye for plays, so whenever Loud is going for that dive, as I mentioned on the top side of the map, his TP was able to find uh, multiple kills. I'm always happy to see Yaharong in control majors, of course, uh, as uh, Jin Air Grace. That was uh, his forte, <laughs> so I love a little bit of a, of a throwback. Are you claiming that player is your own? He's not. With the mm -mm. final two spots wow. in the group stage <laughs> on the line, let's take a look at how we got here. This is a review of that play in a bracket. We started with the six teams. Two are eliminated, four remain. Two will be eliminated today. Two will advance to New York City. And as our first series draws nearer, this is a friendly reminder to everyone at home to lock in your Pick'ems for this series. Pick'ems will officially close at 11.15 a.m. Pacific time. And if you don't do that, then you will automatically be subscribed to Gulborg's Church of the Coin. Uh, choices in Illusion, flip the coin. Did you guys lock in your Pick'ems? No, I forgot. I locked it in today, forgot the first series yesterday. Church of the Coin. Great job, Raz. Do it. Vote for who you think will win. Now, we will talk brief, very briefly about RNG versus Det FM. It is a David and Goliath matchup. RNG are the absolute huge favorites. Gentlemen, can I just get one quick thought uh, as this is the second series to play today? Chronicler, Det FM, RNG. Even a single win, I think, would be a huge achievement uh, for Dead FM. It is such a lopsided matchup that uh, a single win to me would be a really big win for the LGL already. They're a hungry team. I think they'll play at their best. And well, here we go. We'll find out if they can. I think there was a fantastic interview yesterday along the lines of, if we can beat RNG, we can win Worlds. Let's find out if Dead FM can surprise. Now, North America versus EU is a constant debate online. And debate's the word I'll use today. <laughs> it has been years since we actually had a direct best of five between the two regions. So with that in mind, we've decided to take a look at the history of this rivalry. I am, the thing is, I think it's a bit disingenuous. I don't think I can call it a history because- Okay. Uh, well, wait. What? Uh, what? I, I, you know what? You know what? Trevor, I felt like you were going to get into a little bit of a uh, of a dangerous area. Um, personally, I don't know if you're well equipped to host 
when it comes to EU versus NA. And, and, and I really, we've had a great time thus far. We've had a great time this week, but I could hear some of that traditional... Well, look at the numbers. I, 105, I'm not 72. Ar- He's sounding biased. He's sounding biased. Put them right, in line. I'm not, I'm not so what's your to, point? I'm what are you getting trying, at, Chronicler? I'm not trying to argue. I'm just saying, as an LCK caster, I have no horse in this race, so I'm going to ask you specifically to take a look at this. Okay? Thank I don't, you, I don't, I don't, I don't want any... control of the show. I don't want anyone to say that it was just, you know, quick shot as host, he was biased. No, th- we're going to have a fair debate. And then, uh, by the end of it, better. okay. by the end of it, no one will be able to complain on the internet. Okay. People never do that, and I'm sure the day that will agree I'm with as you, well. I'm with you. So where are we going, boss? <laughs> Gentlemen, <laughs> what I want to hear from you is what is your favorite EU versus NA memory? And quick shot, because I very uh, rudely took over. Can we start with you? Uh, I believe that we can. Um, Especially because my memory is one of my favorite production team. This is going to sting for you guys just as much as it will for Raz. Do you remember G2 versus Team Liquid in 2000? Oh, no, 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 no. What was the statement? Let me try to summarize this in my best quick stats version possible. Okay. Fastest best of five win ever. Okay. Worldwide. I think you guys lasted less than 65 minutes. Oh, you like history. I do okay. indeed. Okay. You like history. Okay, quick shot. Yeah. Great memory. You like stats. Thanks for sharing. Okay. Raz. How about the only team not to be able to make out of the play-ins? Ooh, I, mm. which, which only major regional team? Oh, that was Matt Lyons. Oh, Team Liquid in the play-ins really took a stomp to them. I kind of recognize a specific player. Is that Impact? Is he playing today? On Evil Genius' side? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was pretty historic, wasn't it? It was, it was. Where are you going with this, Rez? That was my favorite memory. I-, I feel like, okay, if you're not happy with that, I have one more memory of NA versus EU. Roll the footage. Why don't you? <sighs> Who is that? Wait. No! Who is that? No! Oh, quick no! Are you getting farmed? No! Are you getting farmed by Jazz? This is not. Oh. Oh, with, while he's reading a book, by the way. While he is reading the book, he is solo killing you mid. Ah, uh, this was not fun. This was not enjoyable. I am so. I'm. Yeah. Okay, okay, Raz. Yes. Getting a little personal, but I, I, I respect this. This rivalry is okay? a bit personal. Yeah, carry on. Just you're, carry the on. you're the one cover. You're the boss. Twitch okay. chat. We want to hear from you. The question is simple. Matt or Richie, who is going to win? Spam chat now with your prediction. Uh, I know. I know that. Please try to ignore Raz. Don't be, don't, don't feel okay. any pressure from okay. him. Right, right. Listen, this is nonsense. That was low, but well played. Sir. That was low. Okay. Now, while we wait for the results to come in, let's go lane by lane and look at who has the advantage. Get back in your spot. This okay, is okay, okay, okay. I am here. I'm here. That I was not good. That. We're good. We're good. That. Right. Let's take a look. We've got less than 10 minutes okay. when we set this conversation up. And I want to talk about the different lanes. Let's start with Armut versus Impact. Seeing as you just so rightly threw me under the bus the last time these teams played, what do you make of this matchup? For me, I love Armut's energy, especially Narma. When he gets his champion, he looks incredible. He's going up against Impact. And Impact let them know, top die number one, top die number two. I feel like he is just in his element, getting out his picks that he's made really popular. Another one too, just seeing some of the uh, GP picks throughout the tournament that we saw in his regular season performance, he's been top notch so far. And what's really important to me is that Impact is a player that feels like no matter what the state is in the regular season, no matter how I think some of his early playing games were shaky, he can always deliver if he turns it on. I mean, look at those statistics, right? In terms of damage percentage, 28% from the top lane. Gold share, nearly 23%. CSD at 14, it's a minor advantage, but I think more importantly, plus five hundred goals telling you something about how this gentleman's playing. Top die squared is one of my favorite sentences that, as you've said all weekend, I that Mordecai is a counter pick. And I also have to give Huge props to the production team. We got a new location for today's segment, but look at the set dressing. Look at the photos, the stats. I mean, great job. I want to move us along, and I'm going to start us off by, let's say, JoJo versus Niski. And I'm nervous for this one, because I think JoJo's the better player. Yeah, and I think both players have shown a lot. The key difference between me is that I think JoJo, when it comes to individual performance and clutch, has been, throughout the entire year, a really big force for EG. And as much as I liked what Niski was able to show uh, in the matches and how he was able to support El Yoya, I think against Jojo, that will be a lot harder. Oh, I think this was the replay you requested, right? I feel like that one was yeah. beautiful. I had the solo kill. And I want to, could you say that one more time, quick shot? I think as an individual play, just exclusive with the mid lane, yes. 
Jojo may be the better player. However, okay. I will say, I think both of the teams utilize the mid laners very differently. Right? Yes. I think Niski is a sort of, he's not necessarily the flashy guy that wins you the games. He is that roaming style of player. So they play in different ways, different clash of styles. But Jojo's good. I like that. I like that. Okay. I'll, you know what? I will give you another concession. I'll give okay. you a concession of my own. I like this. Where we I going? like Unforgiven. Oh, so do I. In the bot side of so the map. So do I. Yeah, with Kaiser. Okay, so can we be nice about this? I really like Vulcan too, and I think uh, the, the the two to get like bot lane is interesting. The bot lane for me is the most competitive that I can't I can't like make a defendable argument on which one is 100 percent better. Yeah, I, I just want to give both you shout out for being nice against another. I'm a, bit, <laughs> a little bit caught apart. Uh, I'd agree with you. I think as a bot lane, uh, when it comes to playing uh, with the rest of the team. You're going to give the edge to Matt, but that's also not very surprising because uh, EG has had to pivot, has had to shy away from playing with Danny. And I think that a really good example here is uh, Vulcan's ability to make sure that Kawi, who is going to be under a lot of pressure, yeah. has not played as many games with his team, has as much support as possible in a setup for success. You get that while Unforgiven being the flexible player that he is, the Seraphine play that yeah. we see on one hand, the Jinx play on the other, really unpredictable in what he's going to be coming into. Before we move on very quickly, I do want to touch base on the fact that if Mad Lions play it the way they did yesterday, yeah. and if Evil Geniuses play the way they did in their tiebreakers, do you favor one of those teams? Don't give me a prediction. But I think, do you think, okay, let me phrase it. Let me phrase. Yes. Do you think it's fair to say both teams looked better in their BO5 and their tiebreakers than they did in the group stage games? That's yeah. the question I I'll go with. 100%. So. I think so. 100%. 100%. Okay. Yeah, easy. Uh, ultimately, though, what's, I think, uh, as we all know, is going to matter the most in this matchup is how the lanes play around and with the players battling out in the jungle. I, again, you yeah, you're good job. with that, right? Our featured matchup today, presented by Mercedes-Benz, is Alyoya versus Inspired. Down here it's going low, less than a thousand. He's taken out. Inspired needs a reset to break the hearts of all Misfits fans. But Kobe stays alive. The shield bow keeps him up. Finally goes down. Inspired's got the reset. It's a 2v1. Looking for another. Results in so much trouble. Inspired with the blade of the Ruined King. Diego shuts down Misfits for the ace. The Pentakill! Inspired stormed onto the European scene as a rookie, earning the LEC's MVP title. But he was not able to lift the trophy and be called the LEC champion. This was denied to him by the very team and the very player he now faces. Shogun making the play, but at what cost? All of the surges being used, a flash forward from Unforgiven. Yoya is now looking for more. That banquet is endless and he is hungry. Talia's here to reinforce, but Jojo trying to make the big play a great flash out of raise, but the setup's still there. There's nothing you can do. EG are gonna help to ace the chief. For all of Inspired's confidence, Alyoya beat him when it mattered most. And this match could be a reminder of that past failure. Will this be a repeat of that 2021 final for Inspired? Or has North America and Evil Geniuses made him grow enough as a player to overcome his old rival? Oh man, the guy doing that VO is awesome. Let's talk about Alyoya <laughs> and Inspired. Okay. I think we've gone through the lane by lane, but I think it would be remiss not to spend more time discussing the impact that these two junglers have respectively on their teams. I also am a huge fan of looking back and remembering the fact that when Rogue played Mad Lions and Inspired was the lead jungler, Al Yoya just took him to town. Chronicler, what do these players do for their teams and how important is it for them to play well today? So I think both these junglers have been uh, perhaps the strongest junglers that we've seen within planes as a whole. I'm not going to talk too much about the direct part of Ooh, it, obvious yeah, regions. Right, okay. uh, but I think that both uh, Alyoya and Inspired have looked incredibly good. I'd argue that or, uh, Alyoya rather has had a better performance, but I also think that Mad relies on his performance. Yes. And that yeah. to me is the key. When you're given Belvet, it's a big signal, right? Uh, well, exactly. It's not only uh, the fact that he's given the Belvet and that they prioritize the Vex for Niski, but also that if that doesn't happen, I think Mad is in, uh, Matt is in a much rougher spot. Yeah, and it's funny for, I think people are gonna love me saying this, but like, I feel like the more reliable team, more disciplined team is Matt Lions in a way. Uh, even though it's as weird as to sound, oh. because in 20 minutes in mid-game, they tend to fall apart. I feel like their map play for a large majority of the early game, especially in the mid-game versus DRX before they ended up throwing it, I felt like was really pristine 
Whereas for Evil Geniuses, when they faltered, especially versus Detonation Focus Me, it's happened later on. But for me, yes, another strong point, the mindset of Inspire. Like being able to recognize that Seth's gonna make the play, being there on time. He's been that type of jungler that is the shot caller, will notice plays and make and will be able to respond to him properly and quickly. Gentlemen, we have less than two and a half minutes to go. I'm gonna ask you for your keys to victory. Yes. And then I would like to move towards predictions. Save the predictions till I queue it up because if you're at home, remember to be spamming M-A-D or E-G in chat. Um, I also should brief, actually, you know what? I'll do you keys to victory and predictions at the same time. This dumb bird yeah. has a bet attached to it today. Just True. very quickly. Jojo the bald eagle. Here is the terms that Raz and I have agreed to along with the rest of the NA and the EU crew. At the end of today, Whichever team loses, that region's representative, so you or me, Raz, will have to deface the bird, Ooh. update the scores, and give a poor one out speech to our respective teams. In addition, a representative from NOE will have to carry that bird through security to New York and live blog the entire thing. Okay, less than a minute and a half to go. Let's take a look at chat predictions. I think we can bring them up. They might be all together. We'll find out. There we go. Chat predictions. Mad Lion, 61%. That's what I like to see. I wanted more numbers though, so chat, help me out. Okay, Chronicler, what is your keys to victory? Who will win? I want to use this full minute to take 30. Ooh, uh, I'm going to go with EG. I think EG, three to two. Um... There's a lot of historic angles to talk about here, but to me, the uh, level of performance that they've shown over the last couple of games, plus impact really coming back, is the deciding factor. Um, and of course, I'm always going to be looking at the jungle, who gets the better matchup there. You love the top die square. You're going to love the EG square. <laughs> <laughs> it's very much the same prediction. 3-2, four evil geniuses. I feel well, it's going to be a close one. The reliance yeah. on uh, Elioya is going to be the downfall for me for them once the series goes long, because I feel like EG has a lot more tools ready. Now, of course, for my prediction, no one will be surprised that I've got Mad Lions 3-2. Yeah. Crucially, though, I do want to mention that all three of us are 3-2. All three of us are living on the hopium of five games between be. these two teams. I do, unfortunately, have some bad news for Dead FM. Mathematically, by quick stats, it has been proven that every play-ins day has featured eight games. And with four days, five days of evidence prior to this, we have one more day to go. Eight games to play. That means five for EU and NA to play and three for RNG Dead FM. Quick it's been stats. over 1,200 days since North America and Europe have played the best of five on the international stage. But that ends today. It's win or go home. Evil Geniuses versus Mad Lions. It starts right now. My laning was already good. It got better. I think everything got better. I will fit on either of the mids, it does not matter. Jojo Pion solo kills mid lane in a counter matchup. I'd say I'm good at punishing mid laners that play without thinking much. The Shadow Surge! Niski is going to get the kill! My matchup in the Jojo would be pretty easy and I have no doubt I will just smash him, yeah. I never really versed Niski in NA. I don't think he's too good at laning. I think he's more of like a macro team fighter, so I think it'll definitely be easy to verse him. Exploiting EG, easiest way is probably keep Jojo on a leash. And A is just way worse than you, so no way we lose. We're ready for New York pizza. I觉得作为LPL的四号种子 もうそれはヤハロンがね、シャオフを揃えきるしてチームをキャリーしてくれるんじゃないですかね、やっぱり。Hello and welcome everyone. It is the final day of plans. We have two more best of five. I'm Pastry, that's GB, and that's Young MZ joining me here for this tryout. No. Just letters? Yeah. You PT? Yeah, why not? Okay, cool. PTMC. I like it. I like it. Yeah, I got yeah, the two yeah. letters going here. I'm excited for this game, man. This is the third ever best of five between NA and EU at MSI or Worlds. It's hard to believe we've had over 10 years of Worlds, and this is only the third time we're meeting each other. 
I mean, I feel like as well that this is just one of the ones where we've had a rivalry going on for so long, but we've never really had that rivalry continue going in that best of five setting. So starting out with play-ins, hopefully more to come as well when main stage come around, but this is a good starting point. We'll see what happens here throughout this game. We kind of knew it coming in, right? Play-ins, five major region teams, only four slots. One of them has to lose, and it will be one of these two teams that drops already off to a bit of a banger. Belveth banned away. Yeah, we were talking about was Elioia actually going to get one of his best champions, potentially signature champion this time around for the tournament. Mark, you had your little own theories. That theory, we're going to ice it for now. <laughs> um, it has been banned away. It, it was an off-camera theory only. I don't know if I want to repeat it. No, don't it's worry. Jump in the line of fire. Uh, yeah, I mean, there's so many things to talk about in this series, so many storylines. Obviously, Winner goes to group stage. That is the biggest, most important prize to talk about. But just these teams each have so many other little storylines and stakes going on. EG being 0-9 versus EU this year at international competition. Mad Lions not winning a best of five against a major region team. They just beat Saigon yesterday. It's been 400 days about since their last best of five win. Both teams have four all pro first teams. You know, like there's just so much to dig into in this series. And I love the storylines, but I also love what I'm oh, seeing right Raven, now baby. on my screen. So. Aatrox does go through, giving over to Impact. In counter response as well from EG, they've decided to ban away the Nar from Armored. But with the Draven finally left open, Matt Lyons decide to play for Unforgiven. Even when he was playing European Regional League of Legends, he was always considered as one of the best Dravens you had on the server. This is such an interesting start to the series for me, both because I feel like Armut plays the current meta top laners very well in terms of the Nar Aatrox size of the matchup, banning half that out. But then for Unforgiven, he was bottom two in CSD so far for play and stage. Part of that is he's playing Seraphine. Part of it is the, the matchups that he's being chosen to. Part of it is the resources he's getting. And this is just a change of styles. Not to say that he's bad, but just they had not been investing that heavily in getting him ahead. No, I think it's actually one of the lanes that Mad Lions was worse at playing towards. Even when you had Callista lanes, they still felt well more comfortable driving the game through their mid and jungle. But going into what we're seeing with pickups as well now, the Maokai as well, this is something Mad Lions figured out yesterday in their series. If they have the Silas, they don't mind going up against the Maokai. The fact that you can steal away that ultimate, they kind of neutralize each other in that one. And then it's back to a classic for at least JoJo in playoffs. He's been playing this Victor a lot. Couldn't make it work against TL, but still a champion he decided to pick up for playoffs. Yeah, we know uh, Silas has been a big champion all tournament long. European Silas hits pretty different as well. So a nice pickup there for Mad to be able to get as last pick in his oh. face gonna be Leona. <laughs> Niski With flashing the, the, uh, the Singe cover. Uh, for JoJo, as well as Impact. JoJo running it in Champions Q, quite literally running it in some of those games. <laughs> <laughs> but goes with the Leona as well to combo for some all-in in the bot lane. This will give EG double counter pick in the bot lane. Pretty mismatched lanes a little bit here. And I feel like as well, you can see it when they're banning out the Wardens at the same time as well. AD carries still loads of available for you if you decide to look for anything. You can play Ezreal if you just want to go that into the uh, into the Draven, play towards your top side of the map. You can still play Aphelios if you want to play something long range that's going to stabilize towards the mid late game and just try and survive that laning phase. Or you can just bring out something completely different like the Caitlyn that's still up and available and try and contest the actual push from a Draven. Hoping we don't see that based off the one game we saw out of it from Kauri and Vulcan thus far. Well, uh, Caitlyn actually gets banned. So yeah, they were saying that. Man, thanks. I appreciate it, Mad Lions. <laughs> giving us a little alley oop there. <laughs> I don't want to uh, not see that matchup. Junglers, of course, getting pinched further on El Yoya. The fact that Inspired already has the Maokai. We'll see Hecarim banned out. If they want to keep pushing jungle bans, do you go Graves ban or something here? Said one kind of the other consideration. So maybe yes. that's the debate right now for EG. Clock kicking down there, Rigby on the case, and the decision is the tank jungler gonna take out Sedwani. There we go, coming through as well, and I think just taking away the trundle, you don't want to play into the tanks either on that side. Knowing top laner still haven't been picked up, we saw Armour just default to on yesterday, set up his team with some great CC instead, and while you already have the Leona, you already have a Silas that can steal away some of the ultimates, having something that stabilizes impact, I think fits way better for Armour rather than going something alongside the Fiora or something that's gonna try and contest it. Especially given the Draven locked in already in the bot side, you don't want to have to babysit split sides of the map. You want to be able to send all your resources down. Vi is perfect for this game plan, kind of advancing this idea of probably trying to get some roams off down to the bot lane, make some dives happen, get those cash into the Draven. 
Now Jin getting hovered, really not hoping for EG that that's a champ you would go into. That laning phase into Draven Leona, unless you have to counter match up, is absolutely atrocious. But stabilizing with something unforgiven, and Kaiser had a lot of success with yesterday in the Varus and in the Tam Kench. Super nice at surviving at least the all-in potential you might have. You're already playing into a buy. The fact that Tam Kench is locked in here, it cuts a lot of the champions that you have on the opponent's side. <laughs> yeah, it's gonna be uh, difficult to make the dives happen. You still, of course, have to survive the lane phase, just the trading 2v2s as well. Rumble! Rumble! hey -o. All right. Armit reaching deeper into that champion pool right now. Interesting. Okay, I haven't seen this one in a minute, but again, we talked about this a lot. B1 Aatrox has been extremely popular all tournament long, and teams have just been trying to find different counter picks. This is yet another unique one against Aatrox. It's funny with Rumble, because ever since we had to do he was one of the few that was actually being... Of course, a durability patch, a lot of the champions got nerfed in terms of the shielding and everything they provided. Rumble was one of the only champions that did not see a nerf to Bad. his shield as well, coming oh. through with the W. So his resistance Bad. actually only got up, and then the shield was still in a fine position. Yep, so we will have to see if that will be a matchup that gets flipped around at all. I'm most interested in the mid lane. Jojo Pune played the Silas side of the Victor Silas matchup into upset, got Chovy gapped, as they decided to call it. Uh, now taking this to play into Niski. There's a little bit of history there as well with Niski playing his first champion skew game into Jojo Pune's Akali, getting solo killed multiple times. There's just so many little things in this series. And I'm actually super excited to see Jojo perform on the Victor because he's been a super stellar team fighter on a lot of champions that has agency and playmaking potential. But when I was watching his games back on the Victor specifically, there's a lot of team fights where he still died due to wrong positioning or Flash still being up and available where he sometimes seemed a little uncomfortable on that specific pick. So going up against a matchup where you get a more free laning phase where you have the possibility to punish it, I just want to hone in on your point and really say that I'm excited to see how far he can take the matchup. Well, we are remaking the lobby. So just going to get that back in position. We'll be into the game as soon as possible. Picks will be the same, of course. So don't worry too much about that. But uh, unfortunately, Actually, we are getting baited. A minor delay to kick off game one of this festival. Ah, uh, you knew we'd have to have at least one. Evil, whatever, however they do the pauses built into the evil genius's name. Vulcan hitting them early. Oops, <laughs> lobby bug. Well, we can't have a world without this on our screen. It, it is just tradition at this point. And hopefully moving forward, we won't have too much of it. I feel like we've gotten less delays, but it's EG. You yeah. can't avoid it. <laughs> and to be fair to production, this was definitely a, a client bug. Yeah. I was in the game, and somehow I didn't get into champ select, and like there was just a couple little uh, hiccups, or maybe the observers couldn't get in either. In a spy in it. the client, Mark C. <laughs> you, you can, can see, see it too! Yeah. You're like, <laughs> Yeah, but the viewers don't know you're that. <laughs> well, until now, at least. If you have a Tournament Realm account, too, you could log in. I'm too lazy for it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, all right, so obviously mid lane, very aggressive in terms of uh, Jojo Pune wanting to get the shove in that matchup, keep Niski underneath his turret. Bot lane, we talked about the Draven, wanting to snowball ahead. And then Armut versus Impact is, I think, the X factor for me, given that we have not seen Rumble yet at Worlds. I'm most, I'm pretty sure about that. Yes, that's Armut has not played it in summer thus far. Uh, and I'm looking at his career stats all time. We'll see how many games he has on it. Some. Somewhere? There it is. Wow, a top lane with Rumble games. What a Three shot. Rumble games. Not that many. But what's, what does the win rate say? 100% baby! <laughs> That's all I'm looking for. 100% win rate on the Rumble career-wise. Four, Im uh, not Impact, four Armored. Three games played total. We don't count. We only look at percentage. Stats don't lie. I'm feeling good. How much it as well. Definitely curious to see how that matchup plays out. In general, I was expecting top side to be the focal point of the matchup. So the Draven being thrown in early here by Mad Lions is interesting because to your point, Elioia will have to divert resources most likely to that side of the map at some point, even though that's not the style that kind of brought them here. Yeah, and I mean, it, it, it is still fine for Mad Lions to play with a Rumble. It's not to say a lane you have to play for or anything. Like, you know, it's just throw an equalizer down and then you just get rid of the carbon and then you don't really have to be worrying about playing weak side. Counter like GP, how he utilizes the cannon barrage every now and then in lane, you don't have to play for it. Yeah, and you can play it just for Bully too. If you assume that your bot lane's winning, the enemy jungler like Inspire's gonna have to go down to the cover bot crashes and stuff like that. That just gives Rumble time to bully the matchup individually in Masters plus solo queue, 56% win rate in 292 games. So obviously a Rumble favored matchup. It's gonna be about if Impact can survive it. He is known for playing weak side and surviving difficult matchups and still being relevant later on. He's probably gonna have to tap into that skill set in game one. 
And it's important as well for a matchup in the top lane because I feel like if you take a look at in terms of strength of both teams, at least for Mad Lions, right? Bud lane has been a bit of a weakness, but also top lane, even in the matchup yesterday, um, Amber got solo killed quite a bit. So mm. if you finally get the upper hand against Impact going into this series, that's already, already a super good sign for that end. And then vice versa on the opposite side of the coin, as Impact on the Aatrox, if you can get yourself going and just further hammer down a weak point up here, that's a way for your team to rally around. Yeah, well, looks like we might be getting into things. Coaches have shaken hands. Mac has done the ceremonial gift giving of the tie to the enemy coach. Last time, a uh, member of someone we saw GB on stage receive an item of clothing. I believe it was a Saigon Buffalo jersey to Mac. I'd like to remind you, that game did not go quite so well. So you have to give ties to win. If you give shirts, clothes, bumper jacket, whatever it was, that's apparently a loss. But finally into the game between the first series between EU and NA since 2019. And of course, I want to remind you guys that back then it was EU that took it, but NA on course for this year to try and get back at those smug EU bastards. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad you it's said it, not, mine. not me. I'm I like can those, say it. I'm God, like those, I hate us. Those delusional NA fans who think that they have any chance. Europe has won the only two best of five. It was a 3-0 in 2018. Fnatic slamming C9 in the semifinals. It was a 3-0, and at the Maybe time, the fastest so finals of all time in MSI finals where G2 slammed Team Liquid. And that NA hasn't even won a game in a best of five say, versus EU. What chance do they have? Gotta Gold start board? with step one. Maybe win, Maybe JoJo and friends will win a game uh, against EU this step year. One. We'll have to see. Potential late invade could come through. This is something Matt Lines has done quite a bit. But if they start sweep as well, as they come through here, can try and force the opponent away and just split the map in a position where you don't get to play for the Draven lane. So far, no junglers around. And Inspired may just have to walk back, seeing there's no Vi around. Yeah, you have uh, Vi starting on the top side of the map, trying to get uh, the clear top to bot, like we said, wanting to put attention down the bot side of the map. I wonder if EG were trying to get a split map situation, hoping to find the Vi on the buff, and then yeah. shove her out of her side of the jungle, and then you get to isolate the bot lane, and they can't play as aggressively as they want. The fact that they didn't find the Vi and didn't want to have an extended sequence of just having the Draven poke you on your buff, I think they sacked that trade. Already in goes Kaiser, cleanse up by Unforgiven. Could be trouble here for Kauri already. The Draven Demon stacking up a Vulcan with the counterplay. Ego's over, and now there's a Flash Force. And they continue with it, and that's one of the things you have to take, take into account when you're playing against Tom Kench. His base damage, level one, is so high. Remember, back in the day, when you leveled up his ult uh, ultimate, that's when you got the extra HP damage from your basic attacks and Q. That was made into his passive. So level one, if you leave him al alone and just hit you up, you're going to take a lot of damage. Double sums force out of Unforgiven will remove some of that aggressive playmaking. Kaiser still has his. And uh, it is the summoner down on Vulcan. No exhaust available. But still coming out ahead for EG in that level one trade feels very good for stopping some of this aggression. Also warded out Elioya's path. No camps down the boss side as Inspired has just done his bot clear. Now moving into the river as well. Gonna get spotted though. We'll see if he can make something happen. But I guess just backing off soon as he sees what's going on. Also, to your point, knows Elio is there, so doesn't really want to commit to this early 3v3. But it's very interesting, just looking at the map, go in here, cleanse forced out. Team has played again, but this time they get a summoner out of the deal. So not bad, creates another point of attack. The problem that EG are currently facing is that at some point in time, Inspired has to walk up towards the top side. He needs to clear his camps up here, while Elio has the benefit that since he started top and is passing down towards the bot side, you can try and get aggressive now. Oh god, you can just see... Oh, oh Niski! Looking like a solo, not gonna be able to grab it, but Jojo was trying to bully, was doing well, but Niski hit in level four, taking over in that trade. Oh god, EU mid laners beating Jojo on both sides of this matchup right now. Didn't force any sums. Niski might have tried to go for a flash auto, but did not go for it. And look at what this does to the rest of the map. Inspired was pathing up towards the top side to try and stabilize his mid laner now. He walked down again on the bot side, and he's still not cleared a single camp on that top side. Yeah, he's fallen so far. Far behind El Yoya already multiple camps down. Finally getting up to his top side here and will start uh, catching up. I did think that he was gonna have an easier time clearing up to the top side because it looked like Jojo had to shove in that matchup for the first couple levels, but once Silas gets his full combo unlocked, starts going for those trades. I know I saw a lot of Twitter of this first buy coming through, and I'm sure I'll see a lot of it again. Mm. Uh, Oblivion on first item coming through from Jojo there on the Victor as well to try and get rid of some of that Silas he healing. Would be fun to track that over the course of 12 to see I'll how keep much you updated. Shakarez on Twitter is always the man to follow for in-game information. 
whether that be banter between players, which uh, surprisingly, only good luck have funds this series. I feel like for these teams, these players, it's a little surprising, kind of speaks to the stakes of this matchup that neither of them are trash talking. There was a little bit on Twitter beforehand. I'm sure it'll change over the series. Getting that mental edge, of course, is always very important. Once you have the 1-0, the then, then you unlock your trash talking Exactly. Yeah. No one's really sure what they want to do at this point in time, but once you get that first game, surely. All right, we'll see how it all shakes out. Trash talk and all. Dragon coming up at the five-minute mark. We'll be infernal to kick us off as Jojo is back, hopefully, here in this mid lane. Did have to burn his teleport, though, but Niski did trade his away. Impact also been doing quite well in his matchup as bottom side. Big damage onto Unforgiven, but the wave has been pushed in the right direction for the Mad Lions. And the more I've seen Varus at the tournament, the more I actually like it. He has really good trading pattern into a lot of these champions. Just quick three autos, pop your passive, and then get an ability ahead to win the trades, then back off. Works really well, especially when you're competitive. Win a time catch when you're playing into these aggressive other supports like the Leona. Yeah, even didn't go what I would think was the uh, stronger laning matchup uh, in terms of rune choices. If you were going to go Hail of Blades or something, grab Taste of the Blood, try and sustain up through the lane phase, goes Lethal Tempo, which is more speaking to the on-hit Ferris build uh, that we saw, I believe, yesterday as well. Right, available for Yoria trying to get in. Ooh! Inspired does get it, so he defends his own jungle. Bot lane off that lines, they had the move, but Inspired, lone man in the jungle, still managed to secure up his own camp. So, we have Yoria getting a little bit of an advantage in the jungle off of some bot pressure, I would say, more than anything. But actually a CS lead now for the bot lane of uh, EG getting that shove. Draven's catching the wave right now, catching up a little bit, but uh, a fairly good first phase through the lane phase for EG's bot lane, surviving this pressure. Uh, surprisingly, even thus far, a small gold advantage for the side of EG. And I think what's really interesting is to take a look at how is Matt Lines actually going to enable this Draven? Because it's been path towards, it's been having some early skirmishes, but it haven't really seen the all-in aggression from just coming down and trying to blow all the summoner spells of a buy, trying to go in or anything like that. And even when Ilyoya does hit that level 6, if the window is not correct with you hitting it before Vulcan hits level 6, it's going to be really hard finding a point of attack. Definitely looking at, at level 6 with the summoners coming back up for Unforgiven in a second here as when they want to start going. Uh, if they can now get the pressure with Niski, who has done a very good job in this lane, controlling the wave states for the most part outside the first couple levels, uh, it will give him some roaming opportunities. This is what Niski made his name on, why he is the LEC MVP, is his ability to get on the map, either working with his jungler to accelerate him, or just snowball side lanes. Yeah, Sal's pretty good at that as well, so certainly looking for him to get out of the lane. Inspired, there was called over to mid because Niski had the lane in such a good spot, and Jojo was a little scared to step forward with El Yoya perhaps being nearby. However, it looks like that is going to be broken, and Jojo is going to go ahead and return to mid lane. All happy as bottom side still trading. Once again, good poke there from Kauri. Yeah, most certainly. Like, it just feels like EG is really good at finding their moments to come up and trade. You see it again and again. So despite Mad Lions being a team that had the push, now a little bit slow push backwards, they're still the one losing out on these trades. Able to keep the wave mostly on their side of the turret as well, meaning it's very hard for Kaiser to go in and then get chased all the way up the lane or something like that. Uh, I will also say, the Babysitter Inspired has done a good job for the Zoomer of JoJo, <laughs> making sure he's safe at home in his lane. Yeah, despite Inspired having to sacrifice camps, he is behind one level at the moment with just create a window where there is point of attack for El Yoya, but it won't really be used. And once Inspired starts clearing the, well, you can already see now, he just hit level six. So it's a very small window. Now, having towards this eight minute mark now where Rift Hell has spawned on the map, seeing the rotations of the support moving up to try and secure this objective is going to be interesting. Inspired already starting it up. You can see in the minimap, Kaiser has the first move, but the bot lane of EG is making that move up as now. Yeah, EG is moving up. So far, Impact has done very good in this matchup. Up farm, has a Hex Drinker completed, giving him... Oh, we're going mid. Flash ulti mid, we're going to try and get the first blood onto Georgia. Nitsky lining it up, the Chaos Storm is down, and Aoyoya is going to take him a chain of corruption out of Kauri. He's going to try and find some counter play, but I don't think there's much here. The damage is good, but no counter kill. First blood comes through for Mad Lions, but what has happening on the top side, it's still EG securing the Rift Herald for themselves. So yes, Gold does go over for the first kill. You do shut down Jojo a little bit here because he does not have the teleport yet to get back to lane. But you still have tempo in your kit now, having a Rift Hell to summon to have a play to make. Evens the gold up for Mad Lions. Gonna potentially get some turret plates onto the Draven as well. At least one here. We'll have to see if EG can get back to their turret relatively safely. Uh, they're coming back around. But like you said, Jojo didn't lose his flash for that play. Kind of dropped his gravity well on himself and said, all right, you're just going to kill me. I'll hold my sums here so you can't make that play again. EG want to punish in the bot side. Vulcan a little ahead of the play. Exhaust still going to force the clan's flash devour. Ulti was ready into the oh. battle as well. 
big alley oop CC chain, and Kai says Bailey gonna get hit by the end of that ult. Follow up with a twisted advance, Bramble smash back, make it two for EG's bottom lane. That's right, make it one, make it two, EG strike back on the bottom side. Great ultimate from Inspired, but in the beginning, it's Vulcan that sets up that place, finding the dive on towards Unforgiven. Vulcan is such an important member for EG. When he's on the Enchanters, you can hear the fans groan because they want to see plays like that. They get the kill on the Draven. He was at around 230 stacks when they got that kill, shutting down that snowball win con of Mad Lions. Yeah, and just 30 seconds ago, we were talking about how Mad Lions had equalized the gold lead. Well, gentlemen, <laughs> I beg you to take a look at the gold score once again, and EG in a little more than 1k gold lead after finding not only the Rift Hell, but also the two kills. Taking a look at this initial kill onto Jojo. Flash ult just drops the grab field. He could try and flash underneath his turret, but he would still be pretty much out of range of it. So very intelligent to not try and panic flash under your turret and still die. Just gives his life up. A nice enough trade by EG getting back. Puts El Yoya and Niski low enough that it's very easy for the top side of EG to finish off, grab that Rift Herald, and still make the rotation down the bot lane. And in the end, you know, it just becomes an overextension from the side of Matt Lyon's bot lane. They try to stick around for too many plates, and they get punished immediately. So back on the map now, bot lanes have been rotated in towards the mid lanes. Mid laners down towards the bot side. Infernal Drake's still up and available, but no one really in a position where they want to start it up yet. Yeah, again, we've seen a lot of late Drake's. So I imagine that trend will continue. New carry though, the one with all the gold, barely shorting the ultimate onto Unforgiven, who did not have cleanse. But did have flash, yeah. yes. He he knew that was not gonna hit him. Nicely played by Unforgiven, just getting out with the uh, Draven speed boost there. This is a I think a, a beneficial situation for Mad Lions having the bot laners sitting in mid lane, 2v2ing. Gives the Silas the long lane to try and bully the victor if he's ever caught out of position. You can hop on top of him. But in the end, what this game to me so far feels like is just very extended laning phase. We don't really see too many rotation in terms of, well, I know your red buff is spawning. Let me go in and get aggressive vision and try and invade on you. Right now, there is a possibility with the bot lane having to push in mid to get some deeper wards, but no trinket. Oh, well, there actually is wards from the side of Vulcan. He's just come back to get them. But there's no really aggressive moves being made. It's very just um, a lot of handshaking on the map at the moment. Good trade. They're in the bottom side there for Jojo, trying to keep Niski at arm's length. Impact though, the one in trouble spots. Kaiser though, now gonna have to play back. Alioya has been here for quite a while trying to set up this lane gank, but Impact, always the weak side specialist, playing with the required safety. Yeah, Impact has uh, been farming away up here in the top side, having pressure in lane. Hasn't gotten any turret plays, but been very Safe, which has enabled Kauri to get these two kills. The substitute bot laner for Evil Geniuses coming in in the middle of playoffs during that finals weekend. Went to five games versus 100 Thieves, couldn't take him down there and had the month and a half-ish of play now with the Evil Geniuses starting roster and kind of got the exit in the basket right now of him. Also have the Turkish rivalry, him and uh, Armut as well. You know, there's just so much, so much to talk about in this series. Now, Drake has been spotted off. EG is at a petition to contest. Inspired does have that ultimate available, but before they even get there, Drake is taking Jojo on the flank, but not in a position to engage. Niski having to shove in bot lane gives an escape route for Mad Lions there. They can just hike down into the river. Jojo Kuhn, not very safe, cutting it off himself, but that does mean EG gets mid prio here. You can see Kauri shoving this wave as fast as he can. Should be able to get at least one or two more plates there. Yeah, playing for plates, it looks like, on two different lanes here. I'm not going to work ahead on this top lane plate. Should be one in mid at least there for EG. Vulcan is roaming up here. Doesn't really have anyone nearby just yet, but is setting up the potential play for Jojo. That plate's kind of looking juicy. A little bit of extra gold, but Armut actually backing away from it. Very nicely done. Yeah, respecting the fact that something might happen. Niski on the bot side against Impact. The ulti out of El Yoya. Could be problems there for Impact. Damage looking there, but Impact defends the dive. Can't turn it back around, but Inspired's here. Let's the ulti out. And that's going to force Mad Lions away. Ooh, gets a flash as well. Uh, once again, a little bit of an overextension, thinking they have to kill on Impact, but this is what happens when you go A, double AP solo laners. Hold up, hold up. Wait a minute. Nothing's happening. <laughs> Everyone holds their collective breath for no reason. Nicely kited out by Impact there. Two for one in summoner trade in favor of EG. Impact does have to flash underneath his turret, but Alyoya and Niski committed theirs. It was also an interesting teleport situation where Impact had teleported down towards the tail end of that Drake fight to grab that matchup against the Silas while Victor reset top lane. It looks like they want to have the Victor matching the Rumble 
instead uh, in the Hex Drinker for uh, Jojo Pyun, or excuse me, uh, Impact doing a better job into the Silas. Yeah, but it's also just the fact that Impact's so happy about the fact that he can build more later in this series, right? It's such a valuable item ever since it was changed to have a shield based on your AD in the game. And also just Jojo with that Crown of the Shattered Queen. It's so good when you're playing against Vi. It's so good when you're playing against Dive Composition. And so far, if he's not getting hit by the Equalizer, there's not really going to be anything procking that shield. Yeah, that was exactly where I was going with that. There's not that much range available for Mad Lions. It's very much an all-in composition. Niski setting up, uh, sorry, Vulcan setting up the play onto Niski. Stolen the victor ulti there, but Gravity Well, not enough of a slew to set up the play. There is potential here for a dive, but the Chaos Storm used early by Niski smartly to clear this wave out nice and quickly. And I just feel like with this game pace that's happening right now, EG feels so happy with it. Like, you have a control mage in the mid lane that's pretty much going to be impossible to get onto if he has his abilities available. And even if he does get CC'd, that's the time catch, right? And then at the other time, Kari's just going to be more happy reaching that late game. The worst part for this matchup was going up against a Draven in the laning phase. Nothing really happened after that laning phase. So, so far, EG feeling comfortable with the 1k gold lead they have for themselves. Feeling comfortable? I was casting... Uh the DFM series yesterday, and I, I kept talking about scaling advantages and whatnot. Not always did the game go that way. So while EG, you can argue with the victor and whatnot. I was watching that game with the other guys in the, in our hotel room, and we, we came up with the thing that sometimes you, you cannot care about the turrets, the gold, the camps, the drake. Sometimes all that matters is who actually won that fight. Yeah, and that was exactly what the series was like yesterday. I'm not sure if this series is going to shape up to be the same, but it's just an example of different kind of games of League of Legends. It's only game one. We got time. It's only game one. We'll see if Mad can find a foothold in this game right now. Like you're saying, though, it does feel like EG is feeling very happy, scaling up almost at a 2,000 gold lead. They're able to get a fair amount of farm onto their most important carries. Jojo Pune has first strike, has farmed up a good amount of that, actually, given that he's had melee matchups. Uh, he's at two... 36 gold right now for the first 15 minutes of the game without getting to a major team fight where you can see big gold spikes if you ever able to drop uh, your gravity field get a stun then drop your chaos storm on top and suddenly hit three or four members of that you can get an insane amount of gold influx even if you don't get a kill in terms of outer turrets getting taken it's only the mid lane so far that's actually calling um second rift arrow of course have been used as well so we're just into a point of the game where it's all going to be about whoever just finds an outplay in terms of rotation, right? You got possibilities for pushing in the mid lane deep from EG, rotating your members up towards the top side or butt side, if that is what you're looking for. But on the opposite side, Matt Lyons, Mark mentioned it earlier, they have an entrance towards that Drake themselves from the bot lane. And this is a lot of what I thought was gonna happen in this matchup as far as pacing goes. Teams are fairly evenly matched. You can kind of see where like the different skills and like lane matchups settle, but I think in general, it was fairly close. And both these teams don't exactly play from ahead. They're kind of happy to play through the mid game, nice and patient. They were number three and four in gold difference at 15 as a team through play ins thus far, very close together in that metric. EG was a little bit ahead, um, but you could argue maybe a little bit easier of a group as well, uh, not having to go up against a DRX or Okay, RNG. okay, stop the silence, stop the quiet. We have a Drake coming up here. We have members gathered around it so far. EG, five members already around. Matt Lyons, a bit more split apart from the map. Spire's level 10, actually, a level up on Elioia somehow, but. Don't have time to delve into that mystery because we are indeed going to have a fight. Crab goes to Elioia this time. So that free vision, that extra speed on the side of Mad. They've got the vision advantage right now. EG going to have to walk into them. Trying to use the sapling map packs to force Niski out of the flank. Inspired has Flash to get over the wall if they want to commit for the Dragon, but it's only the second one. Niski also stole the Mako ultimate. Now going to zone them off the objective. Saw a lot of this yesterday as well. But that's more than enough to just kick them away. And it's just the same as before. We have a bot lane, we can walk out. They just take the drag, they leave, that's it. I, when you started being like, hold up, dragon fight coming, I was like, I didn't want to curse it. I didn't even need to say it though. I could see the world where EG is not under pressure to force, so you just kind of stand there. So that's why I'm under the opinion that if you are that team, just walk top lane, take the top turret instead. You know that so many members of the enemy team is going to be around that drag. You already have mid lane taken push in the mid lane, move up towards top side, because just looking at the drake is not going to do too much. No, you got to check it out as Mad Lion sniped their second dragon in the game, could have had impact pushing up top side. I feel like there's a bit of a concern for me for the EG side, where you have all these defensive tools and you keep waiting for Mad Lions to engage. But 
Mad Lions can also just stack objectives. Hold on, Impact in trouble. I can also do this, Impact popping the wall to end it, but I don't think it's gonna do all too much. Inspired there to save to David, not today. Oh, Yoya gets another. And that's cheeky from the side of Mad Lions. You look at the vision currently invested by EG. It's very close to the mid lane, not so much towards the bottom side that Mad Lions have already gained so much control after after they had that first bot lane turret. So Niski and El Yoya, the mid jungle dude that so often gets talked about from Mad Lions, finds a pick off. Very heads up play too. I think Impact was assuming that they had reset after the dragon yeah. situation, but instead they just camped that brush and waited for him. He was on Krugs. You know, Impact was not vastly overextended. That was just a very heads up play by Mad Lions who even up the kill score. Still a little bit behind in goal, but have arguably the power advantage with the two dragons in their back pocket as well right now. Now, I think at least with the Draven that you can say is late game scaling, if he ever gets a kill, or oh, never gets a kill, that is, these adoration stacks adds an execute to your ultimate. Hey! Right? So maybe that's Matt Lyon's idea. We will never get a kill on the Draven and just wait for late game for the kill that matters. Trying here for our move, but I think, yeah, pretty rapidly shaking off that play. Two for Matt Lyon's also incoming, so maybe now the counter dive. Teleport available for impact if he wants to join them under the turret. He's already moving up to the jungle. Spot one. Niski's here as well, though, and they probably suspect Kaiser is also there. So Kauri and Vulcan gonna have to fall back. Jojo instead gonna farm the gold on the tower, but inspired face checking. Needed to throw the sapling, and it's gonna bait him in there. He's pretty tanky, but is he tanky enough? Vulcan finds the devour off the avoid, and impact joined the fight here as well. But now onto Kauri, who's got all the items. The shield boy pumps, but he gets shut down. EG, the first big fight of the game, is gonna go to Mad Lion. It's look good initially for EG. They were playing the map, they were getting turrets, but then they overextend their welcome. There's five members on the Lions on the top side, and they take a bad fight. Jojo Pun was trying to finish off the bot turret. TP not available means it's a 4v5 right as Baron spawns. Look at Niski on the flank. He's straight under them on the minimap. They can go for a turn. He's got Tom Genj ultimate. Not the best for the engage, but here they go. Oh, you're eating a lot of damage, but it might not matter if they can get the kill. Volker gonna pop the shield and try and stay alive. Impact with the turnaround play. Finds the Q, takes out Niski, and that's gonna be no Baron for Mad. All right, EG survived by the skin of their teeth. Mad Lions forced the turn. There's no way you can stand on that Baron at this point in the game. Your damage isn't really there. They have to go for the turn, just was not clean. Jojo Pion able to finish off Niski here. Just a great turn for Mad Lions, knowing, okay, we can't make the top dive happen, but they pick Inspired in the jungle. Nice redirect by El Yoya here, realizing, hey, Inspired's a tanky, annoying champion. Let's go on to Kauri instead. It's also so easy for them to force the fight because two members of EGs are coming from the top side. One member is getting engaged on in the middle, and Impact is on the mid lane. So there's already used so many group members with saturated damage from Matt Lines that EG can't respond to. Also, forcing the Tom Kench onto Inspired on the Maokai, that is obviously not the target you want to be having to ult there. You want whoever is going to have the Equalizer dropped on top of them, but because that got forced out, like I said, El Yoya and Arma com combo together, get the kill there, easy fight from that. And the nice thing at the end of the day, Unforgiven also got a kill. Managed to catch in the stacks, went from Shield Bow to Collector. Has an extra item now, so Draven playing catch up. We had two items for carry in the last fight. Would have made a difference if he didn't get absolutely smacked by El Yoya's Vi, but at the end of the day, EG fade off the Baron, Mad Lion's ahead, but not by much. Gonna and have to rely on these Drakes. We're getting back to one of these Drake scenarios once again. This is gonna be curious to see if we're getting what we got before, but it's just get a Drake, walk away, or if it's actually gonna be a fight around the objective this time around. 40 seconds, and both teams are around the area. Five members of EG once again. Small flash advantage for the side of Mad Lions. Both El Yoya, Unforgiven, and Armut all have theirs up only Jojo with his sums available. They can technically sack this one, but then you're sitting on soul point for the rest of the game. It does feel like eventually EG need to find a way to get Mad Lions off this objective. Once it spawns, Mad has done a very good job of kind of getting this uh, standoff in the river that favors them. Yeah, but now again, there's no vision on the back end. They spot them with the Scryer's Bloom this time around and not having a flank from Mad Lions halters their plan so much. You saw what it did before when Niska was able to steal away the Maokai ultimate and just throw that ultimate in from behind. This time around though, EG, to have a heads up play, to have impact, just be a living ward guarding the entrance. Yeah, we have Jojo marking Armut, forcing him out from behind. Would have been very scary there if he was able to get in with an ultimate. Now have some group up. Front to back team fight available. Mad going for the long wraparound. El Yoya gonna go over the red buff wall. No impacts there, but actually maybe they're gonna peel off. They know actually that they've isolated two from Mad. Evan Frost and Niski's gonna try and turn around, but Jojo lets the Chaos Storm go. Niski, he's just gonna be cut to pieces. Vulcan with that kill credit. And that's just such a heads up play by EG. They know Mad loves to get that flank in, so this time around, they invest so many more members around it. 
the big thing that they were missing there was any threat onto the dragon. They can see because they're just staring each other down. El Yoya is not in the pit, so they can just totally sack dragon priority to hunt the members of Mad Lions in their own jungle, find that kill, and then that allows them to grab the dragon. Really big misstep there by Mad Lion. And big for EG to pick up this objective as well with the dragon. They stopped the stacking coming through for Mad Lion, which was, let's be real, pretty much the only thing in terms of neutral objectives they had going now. So EG, this is where you look towards them and you want them to get a bigger presence of the map. But once again, as you said, Mark, no one's around the Drake starting it up. So it's so easy for EG to peel away here. Yep, and then once you have the members of them grouped up, there's not a clear target. It's 4v5. It's just doomed for Mad Lions. El Yoya able to get out there. I will say, Jojo just burned his TP up to the top side. Don't love that play with how active Mad Lions have been about overloading sides of the map. You now can't use that to collapse just to greet out some farm because he couldn't even finish off the top turret. That's what he was hoping to do, I think. But Mad Lions covered that play. I think Niski matched TPs when he res. And now uh, neither mid laner has them, but Mad Lions have been very proactive about trying to find odd man fights. Yeah, and that's the thing. You can see it with the way they move around on the map. It's always a trio between Niski, Kaisa, and El Yoya, seeing if they can find anyone who's just out of position, if they can get some aggressive hoarding in. EG, though, they are trying to play the map. They are in the 1 3 1. You just saw Jojo up towards the top side, Impact down towards the bot side, keeping the shop in. And now with reset time is coming through for Mad Lions. There is small tempo time for EG to get a bit more aggressive with their own warding, making sure that they won't get caught off guard by the trio trying to find them. This is a tense as hell yeah. first game, man. It's four to four in kills. Not a very bloody game, but the pace has felt fast because there's been so many moves. You can feel the stakes on the line here. Both teams trying to make it to group stage. Only once in history before has the major regions not qualified through planes. That was Mad Lions in 2020. There's an asterisk there that in 2017, HKA is the third seed from the LMS, did not make it. But the LMS kind of dissolved afterwards. It became the PCS. They have two seeds now. So in terms of active current regions, it's only been done once before. The, the memes that will result if you drop this series are going to be endless. Certainly so, and keep popping the ult. A little bit of coverage, maybe was running out. Just wanted to have some fun with it, but Jojo's still here. Very uh, proactive in guarding this little outer turret, but does want to keep farming as much as he can. No, you can see it as well. It was it was Alyria, Niski, and Kaisa on the top side as well. They have pink wards in the brush. They want to come in from a lane gang. Like if Jojo oversteps himself just a little bit, they're looking to catch him off guard. And even EG is responding to this by themselves with their own mid jungle support. They are now roaming around because this is what counteracts it, having that Tamkent around. On that I, respect, though, you can see it in the bot lane as well now. Now, Mad Lions are swapping their attention bot side. EG now getting aggressive on the top side. Going to be able to grab this turret further away for Mad Lions to try and stack up. Maybe trying to find someone in the jungle, but no one's there. And obviously, you have Impact hovering mid lane instead. This does give a bit of a barren window. There's no vision on any of the Mad Lions members, uh, but they can posture around here. They're actually going to start it up. I like this here from EG, seeing what they can get out of it. Vulcan clearing the last bit of vision. Surprise Bloom Pop does get some vision, as you can see. Those extra plants here on the Ocean Rift helping out. But EG actually got a pretty low here, but I imagine it's a turn angle. Well, he could flip it, though I don't love the idea of that. Kaiser may be caught there. Actually going to go back in onto Jojo Pure, and that's a good target. But again, the crowd keeping him so tanky. And Impact's going to capitalize there to give Jojo the kill. Bit of a misread. Here comes the equalizer, though. Matt Lines, oh. they want to turn. Niski, a very spicy lad there on the side. Let's try to make the play happen. He stole the off the Unforgiven. He's found the play, but Impact still standing tall in the team fight. Unforgiven low is going to get chased down by the rest of the tanks. And it's madness in the team fight. Both sides crush into each other. Dive the enemy back lines, and six people are dead. Four versus five. Matt Lines managed to trade out of that fight, even if it was a good turn initially by EG. But Matt Lines, they team fight their way out of that situation. Huge equalizer by Armut forcing the Zonias out of Jojo Pune. That was also the Tom Kench ultimate that he forced out, and that meant Kauri was served up on a silver platter. Initially, like you said, great play. Jojo with the Crown the Shatter Queen knows that he can go absolutely ham in this fight, just blow up and kill Kaiser just for losing his ult and his uh, mythic passive. But then here's the overchase a little bit where they step too far forward, Armut's TP completes, and this equalizer breaks the fight in half. Yeah, completely. It was a bit of a delayed play from my Lions because they had to wait for the teleport to come through, but this is why I'll say good kiting from one given as well, had the cleanse immediately, and essentially brawling three guys while Niski and Elioia can take care of the other backline, making it a two or three for two, three in the end of that fight. Impact picking up a number of kills there, as well as Unforgiven and Elioia. 
This has turned into a scrappy game. I really like how Mad Lions have been playing these team fights. I was worried with the Vi that it would be a very telegraphed, obvious counter engage for the side of EG where Tom Kens just devours their primary target. They've always done a good job of then redirecting onto Gowry. I feel bad for him that the other teammates keep getting the defensive uh, spells baited and then he gets left on an island. Teleport, teleport from Niski right now. It's very deep and there is saplings around to spot him, but here they go. Who carry the target again. The Vast Ulti is going to go, but now they're going to start the fight. Kaiser, the low on the front side as Jojo goes cold and Vulcan now trying to mark El Yoya, but Jojo has to get away. He takes down Leona with the fadeaway. Chaos Storm, Kauri finds a shot down and finally EG have found a clean angle in a team fight. Make it three as Niski falls to his old teammate Vulcan. And that was a fight Matt Lyons initiated. Matt Lyons came through with the teleport from Niski. They overforced the fight, and these were the disengaged tools that EG had available to them. I wonder if that was not checking the inventory of Jojo Pune. I think he was on stopwatch in the previous fight. They cracked it. Hold on here. Unforgiven might well, be in trouble. Fact, hello. Unforgiven's fine. Red buff though goes over. Looks like EG want the Baron. They're giving up this potential dragon. Uh, they do have impact going for the Dragon, okay. splitting their resources, getting a little greedy here. Armit's ult will come back available potentially before this Baron's done. Very short cooldown on Rumble's Equalizer. Damage comes through, but there's no way they're going to yeah. steal this one away. Smite is available for Inspired, and while the Equalizer is there, I'm not sure they're going to miss that one. Nope, all five end up with a Baron buff. It was a nice attempt by Mad Lions. Here comes the reset, though. Can they sneak away the third Dragon here and uh, get themselves onto Soul Point? EG is resetting, charging out of the bot lane base, but we might just get another fight right off the top. Be fun one, we'll see. Oyoya gonna start the Drake. Jojo is here already in mid lane. He's getting away pushing, but Impact's gonna be here a little bit late. No chance at a steal. Looks like the fight's still gonna happen. Impact literally dashes into the pit just to see the Drake go down. So soul point for Mab, but they are turning tail, not wanting to fight the recently bought EG. Yeah, and this is only just a consolation prize as well for Matt Lyons. Make no mistake, EG, they are the team with the Baron buff. There's not Matt Lyons is gonna be doing in terms of contesting the map. This is where EG is going to get aggressive. This is where they're going to take over your jungle. They're going to deny you jungle camps, and they're going to put you under a siege under the turret. He's got three men mid. Jojo, Vulcan working in the mid lane. They should be able to grab a handful of turrets here, catapult this gold lead even further ahead. They want to, I feel like, end the game before the next dragon situation comes up because then you're risking flips for soul points but it'll be very hard to completely crack the base of Mad Lions. They are a short range composition. They don't have great waves there. You might be able to find an angle into it. We're gonna have to do a lot of work here if that is the case to end the game here. Rebel Baron Power Play is gonna have to work over time, but in the mid lane, it is Impact getting altered. Popping the world ender, kiting away, but the damage is pretty decent. Now the counter engaging is inspired, dives on in, but he's not as tanky as he might like, and Vulcan actually burns the ultimate to keep him safe. El Yoya, though, did actually lose the 1v1. Unforgiven is a big piece of the carries. He's got almost four items. He's shredding through Impact, and Impact cannot 1v1 him. That is some Draven kiting, but it's not enough to win you anything just yet, and they overreach so far to try and get in on the back line to find Impact. The problem is, there's not enough follow-up to really come through. Man, Mad Lions are gutsy. That call is so dangerous. If you don't get that kill and EG get a light, slightly better turn and kill a couple of you, game over. But what it does get them, even though they don't find any kills, is it stalls out that EG push. Like I said, their wave clear is pretty terrible. And oh, so yeah. your best bet to stop a Baron up shove is actually pick a fight in kind of the neutral area of the map. And it stopped so much, but it doesn't stop the pressure that EG will still have. They got that bot side turret. They can play on the top side now if they want to. Instead, you still have a very long mid lane to play up for. You still have a red side jungle to invade. See it even now, Mad Lions. They just want to try and contain whatever of their own jungle they can with Vision. But surely this is where EG they come around with their own pressure and start clearing it away. The guys on Draven, though. I said before he was almost four items when he was fighting Impact. He's now finished the rapid fire cannon. Jojo, though, also at four items has been the primary damage it feels like in a lot of these fights, especially with Kauri so often being the eye of Alulia's fire ulti. The Baron's about to dissipate. This game, once again, we're back to that same level of tension. Even though EG are up 5k, this game can flip very quickly. I mean, Mad Lions comp always has that kind of one-shot potential, but they are so... Oh, you're deep now, Inspired. We have able to get followed to your old European brethren. We are going to get a flash out of the deal, though, so El Yoya gets out, but not too much burnt there. Yeah, but this is where they're trying to scout to see if anyone oversteps. In the end, though, it's El Yoya himself that is overstepping his boundaries. The rest of EG is towards that top side. Four members on towards the tier two to trying to push in, but with no Baron up minions, they get equalized. And Jojo actually forced to use his teleport to defend the push coming through from Niski on the bot side. Yeah, so where I was going with that was EG's comp is much sturdier in the sense that you have a true tank in Maokai available, able to actually get gold. Leona's a true tank, but obviously can't just match itemization. Whereas Elioya has gone slightly more bruiser with uh, Sterics and 
uh, Sunderer. And so then the Aatrox can also build more resist than the Rumble. You can just end up with this beefier team comp, and it makes it difficult for Mad Lions to start getting these assassinations late game. Jojo Pune himself has like 3,000 HP on top of the Crown of the Shattered Queen. It does make it so Mad Lions engages will have to be very clean. They've been decent so far, but they have not really found an actual win in their fights. They've just been trades the entire time. He has done these as well, so Jojo going to be tough to crack. Mythic finally done for Inspired. A little late, but hey, needed the other tank items more. Had the chains and the spirit visitors. Impact's gonna go ahead, catch that top wave. Minute 15 until the soul is up for mad. EG will have to defend this dragon, but Baron not far behind it as far as major objectives spawning. These mid game fights are gonna be very spicy. Yeah, but EG, they should be feeling so comfortable, not only because they eat that they currently have, but also just because of the itemization, the stylistic of what they had. Tam Kench, Sonya's for Jojo, stopwatch as well coming through from Kauri, the resistance and stopwatch as well from me, it, it, Impact. Like, if a bike goes wrong for them, it's because either Matt Lines finds the most out, best outplay they've seen in the history of League, <laughs> or it's because they make a huge fumble. Even talking about itemization, because there's still a little resist on the side of Mad Lions, EG members can actually forego their pen items. So Jojo Pion going for Lich Bane here, skipping over what you normally see as a Void Staff in the game. Same, most likely for Kauri. You can see him working towards a GA, again, also foregoing an LDR or something. So very cool to see uh, EG realizing, hey, our enemy team doesn't really have tanks. We don't need to punch through anyone. Yeah, but it, it also, if it doesn't come down to that 5v5 scenario I just explained, credit to Matt Lions for still playing the map. Like, yeah, they're absolutely. in a position where I really just feel like they should be getting this away but they still are. They're fighting chip damage here and there, and they're actually aggressive on the map when it should be EG's map. This looks so risky. El is gonna get spotted by a sapling. They were trying to dive the tier two potentially and take out impact, but it looks like everyone's gonna walk out of the situation. Mad Lions, like you said, having good macro. The dragon just spawned, but they're overloading the top side of the map to make it difficult for EG to get that because Mad Lions don't really want a face check 5v5 fight right now. They want this weird flip state in the jungle that where you catch someone in rotation trying to defend top or trying to face check a, uh, a Baron. Here, Mad Lions can grab this turret and then fall back to the Baron, but EG does have that ward in the, I believe it's in the pixel brush or maybe just outside that's spotting this and knowing that they are not actually on top of the Baron. Reset's coming through as well, so this is just going to be where EG takes charge. If they have a heads up play here, they actually have a potential to just start it up immediately, but I'm not sure if they're feeling themselves. Jojo, though. Oh, oh Jojo's, Jojo's always here feeling we himself. Go. <laughs> going to go down pretty quickly. We know El Yoya has gone back to base. They don't know that, Double but TP in from Niski again. Now the front side TP out of Mad. It's gone. Oh, they peel off, actually. They could have burned that down, but they didn't have eyes on El Yoya. Oh, they're oh gonna no! Turn Niski, they've seen him. Niski's just face-checking. The flush is good, but now he's behind the EG tower. The only nice out equalizer. of Unforgiven's really nice. Equalizer also good, but I think Niski is going to be left for dead. That Chaos Storm, pretty nice. Sony's going to buy some time. Mad back to Baron, but Niski is going to die here. M Niski die. Mad Lion Theft turn on towards the Baron. It's going down quickly. Inspired around, but I'm not sure if he can get in he's there. He's going for he it. Are you me? It's Unforgiven left alone, gonna get blown up as Jojo is soloing out the enemy support, and that will break this game open. Evil geniuses find the pick on Daniski. They get the collapse. Inspired rides the taxi with his W flash in to steal it away with the teleports. EG are trying to end the game. They most certainly are. Death time is still 20 seconds for Niski. He's the shortest one around. Uh, yo, yeah, you're good, but you're not that good. EG, they're coming in towards the base now. Baron up minions. Nexus tower's falling. A tense affair, but the first game it looks like it's gonna break the way of EG. It's only Eloya left to defend. And evil geniuses will find their first win in uh, world matches against a European team. No one beats EG 10 times in a row. <laughs> if Mad Lions can win a best of five, EG can beat an EU team. <laughs> These are the miracles <laughs> you will oh, only no. experience at the World Championship. What a way to kick it off, though. One zero, but not. Definitely a, a bumpy ride for all the fans at home. This is going to be a fun series. Yeah, this is not the kind of win that makes you feel, okay, we've now seen how this series is going to go. One team has downloaded the other. It was a very back and forth game. The Draven did not have the best early lane phase. Mad still did a good job bouncing back despite that, but just never got enough of a lead with their comp. No, I'm sure the analyst desk is going to cover it too, but the draft as well coming through, that was just completely neutralized from Matt Lyons. I mean, I, 20 minutes into that game, it, it's pretty much over in terms of how you play it. It's why you see the desperation plays come through from Matt Lyons, because they know if they take a straight on five versus five team fight, stylistically with how the composition function into each other, you just don't win. So heads up play from EG. I just think they had the better half of Matt Lyons here. Yeah. That Elioia guy.
pretty good. <laughs> well, he said eight, basically what three bands. He fell he, down the full string on Vi and still made plays all game. Yeah, had a comp that was basically built to counter him, itemization built to counter him, still was able to find plays through the first 25 minutes of the game. It's just that one dragon situation that you think Mad Lions is going to take another look at, over committing on that flank when they could have started the Baron and forced EG into them, which EG hadn't been able to do quite yet. So maybe that's the one mistake that they, they look back at that game. Uh, but again, I think draft is a good call out, but just they felt countered. Yeah, and also just how slow the game actually is. I think after this, Mad Lions, they could allow themselves to draft a completely different composition with more scaling. Draven didn't work out for them whatsoever. Heads up play by EG, leaving that open too. All right, well, EG do strike first in the series. So for more on their win, let's send it over to the State Farm Analyst Desk. Thank you so much, gentlemen. Casters come in all sizes, large, medium, and small. You can't unsee it next time they're on oh. the camera. Let's start by talking about the draft as Chronicler and Rez have a lot of strong thoughts. Chronicler, I'm going to come to you first. What did you make of the two respective team compositions that were put together? So the one downside of the EG draft is that uh, it, outside of the Maokai who can play very forward, I think you can run into some issues um, if, if you can't find good engage angles or if you're slow on the draw. Uh, that didn't matter because Mad had a draft that relied on uh, El Yoya finding picks on Vi, and then there was a Kench, and a Victor, and a Maokai, and um, that it was didn't, tough to uh, do. Didn't, yeah. didn't, didn't, didn't end up very well. I actually thought he, um, that Mad Lions actually fell into a huge draft hole. Like yeah. a few things, like double AP versus Maokai various Aatrox, they can just itemize, and they did end up itemizing into Spirit yeah. Visage, Ma Malmordius, and Wit's End. So like... Niskis just couldn't really deal damage that game at once they got scaled up. So there's that aspect. There's Vi versus Maokai, Aatrox, TK. Like, yeah. if you go in, you're just kind of doomed. Come do it. Yeah, it's just a really difficult call. And he late picked that. Uh, I actually would have preferred going into, like, you can try third pick Trundle, or you can 1-2 uh, Trundle. I think it's just that strong. Or you can pick Maokai yourselves. But it's... Trundle was banned this game, unfortunately. But yes, it would have been a good on for, on, on Before, yeah. So I get okay. you being 1-2. I, yeah. I get you, I get you, I get you. I'm with you, I'm with you. Rez, no, but what... it, was, it was banned on 4-5. I was make... talking about picking it earlier in 2-3. and two or three. What, what do you make about yeah. the theory then? Um, I, I'm, I'm not the smartest because yeah. of League of Legends. But game one in the best of five, teams have sometimes tested the waters. You know, tried a composition, tried an approach. Um, Rez, Chronicler, what do you make of the idea or the, the notion that maybe Mad Lions were trying to play a game where Armut on the Rumble, where Unforgiven finally gets his Draven, has been banned a bunch. They're the carries and Alyoi is supporting them, as opposed to the previous games where I think Mad have looked best when Alyoi is the carry. I don't know if it's if it's a conscious experiment or just a reality of being on red side. I think red side just often uh, kind of Ooh, puts okay. teams in, in awkward positions where they feel like they need to take a lot more risks. Uh, I'm always, as Raz already pointed out, even disregarding the normal issues I'd have with this draft, for Matt specifically, I want something that can truly enable Elioia. And when he's on Vi and all he does is set up fights for his team, I don't think that's going to ever work. Final thoughts before we move on to the replays. Yeah, I fully agree on that. I also just think the bans from Evil Genius is really strong. Belveth, yeah. uh, Nar, and Seraphine. So, like, yeah. it really hit what worked well for Mad Lions. Now, of course, let's talk about what worked well for Evil Geniuses. Raz, I'm sure you loved this opening play in the bottom lane from Vulcan, especially because it was what we were talking about in the pre-show. Yeah, it was really well done here. I mean, I mean, this was just after taking Rift Herald, then you move towards the bot side of the map. They thought they had a uh, longer timer before Maokai was in the bot side of the map, but no. They know that they're trying to greed for plates there, and it's Evil Genius is picking up two kills. Really well done there. And it creates a really big problem, because playing Draven in this game is always going to be hard, even if you're ahead, uh, due to the yeah. amount of CC that's available, due to the amount of defensive, uh, or defensive cooldowns, and then you're behind early. It's very tough. Yeah, and it's just the greed that's important here, because like I thought Mad Lions did a great job picking off Jojo Pion as Rift Herald was being taken initially, and then trying to get resources bot side. It was just a little too long. Can I tell you something, though? The first 25 minutes of this game was absolutely fantastic. I want four more games of this. Yes, because please. Because trading blows, I think Chronicle at one point said, it's an absolute bloodbath. The thing is, though, that evenness, -ness, the even state, the state of the game, <laughs> The state of the game, six days, boys, changed dramatically at this 27-minute team fight. And I, I want to come to uh, Chronicle first because EG eventually sort of win this up, but it was close. It really was, uh, but this to me was the final point where Mad could actually still win. Because at some point, I think uh, Gulborg mentioned it during the cast as well repeatedly, you reach itemization breakpoints and you just, you don't get through. You don't get through them anymore. And, uh, I really like that Matt fully commit here. Uh, I think that this was one of the windows where you could have lost the game as a G by overchasing, but in the end, Impact wins out. Yeah, the overchasing aspect was the one that I was afraid of. And it was nice to be able to see that 
four members that were up and available were the jungle and, of course, either Impact and Niski. It was a really close one. Do you want to know why I said they win out? Why? Look at that gold mountain. Do you see that third line that says 30 minutes? Yeah. That team fight just before is what gave them the spike. And immediately after that, we saw another team fight win. Then we saw the Baron. And then we saw EG just close out within about five minutes. It was fantastic. Yeah. There was one last ditch effort that Mad Lions pulled. It was in the Baron. And Rez, I think I'll let you celebrate exactly what happens as uh, Mad Lions started their second Baron only to have it yoinked away. I was afraid because it was all, it was a matter of time. Yep. It was basically Niski trying to buy enough time as he was getting chased down while basically Inspired was looking for a steal. So this was a pretty long haul team fight. Yeah, because um, you can see, so this is right at the beginning. So right Niski yeah. teleports in, Niski gets chased out. Yes. And so this was that aspect where I was talking about it. And it was a good call from Mad Lions to be able to see, hey, okay, they're chasing down Niski. Let's see how much time he's buying. He even goes golden here to basically uh, force Evil Geniuses to commit to this. But yes, while three members were taking down Niski, the rest of them came in just to catch it on the tail end of it. Even I didn't see it. Flash Smite. The Smite steal from Inspired was insane. And even if they get that Baron, I think at that point it might be the classic uh, Baron for Nexus trade that Matt also showed against DRX. <laughs> Um, but but with them not even getting it, it was uh, basically an immediate game over. It stings more cutting from him, I think. Yeah, he's trying. You're trying to be impartial. I like right? this. Yeah. I like this. So, yeah. uh, gentlemen, okay. gentlemen, I have just heard the Mad Lions as they lost the game. They have side selection to game number two. They have selected blue side. I'm not sure how much time we have. So, what do you think this does for the draft? What do you think Mad Lions need to ad adapt or adjust to as they're now down zero one in the series? I think their priorities. Blue side's really uh, broken right now. Everybody yeah. is basically either going to go for Aatrox. Or if they get the opportunity, they might end up going for um, like a Hecarim or something like that. We'll just see what's available to them because the drafts will change heavily. The bans from Evil Genius. I'm going to pause Chronicle. When we come back from the ad break, I'll come to you first because I want to talk about the draft expectations in game number two. As we head to that break, check out Evil Genius's pick, Can't Hold Us by Macklemore as the song that represents their playstyle on the official LOL playlist on Spotify. Can you hold me, Chronicle? Always. Yeah. <laughs> I can hold you too. Run me my money. Uh, uh, yeah, look. 
They don't want no smoke, cause they know I got the vapor. Keeping all my jewelry on me tighter than the taper. I be on my ball and tip harder than the Lakers. Do nothing for low, I, I, I don't do no favors. Came from the bottom, busting out the bag. I'm the girl you never had, never will and never have. All these suckers know I'm bad, No I'm lit. Make these haters wanna quit. I don't want no things you got, not even a little bit. Face pretty, game tight, make you get some act right. Play me once I catch a flight. Money Himalaya height, got no time to be polite. Get these broke men out my sight. If you got the cash, baby, we can leave tonight, alright? Run me my money. 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 Run me my